once I get that pretty well roughed in, I'll uh, go back here now with my radius spoke shave and pull down to the lines. The shave horse makes easy work of that. I can't believe uh, how, what a time consuming tool that is. So here, is the, here we have the roughed out handle. You can see we have a nice oval on there. We've left uh, a little bit of the line, just, just try, or most of it to keep that reference there. And if you look at the ends here, you can see that it is now taking the oh, focus, it is now taking the oval shape on both sides. Now, we need to size it to the, the eye of our, of our um, maul. A properly made axe head or maul is gonna have, uh, the openings are not exactly going to be the same um, on both sides. The reason being is you want a larger opening on the top so you can wedge it and, and get a secure mate to the handle. Um, I was checking this one and I can't really tell any discernible difference here. Uh, maybe a little bit. It is a little bit smaller there, but one thing that does give it away the, the way it's supposed to be oriented is you can see that there's a um, depression there. It's concave inside. You can see that versus more of a flat top there. That tells me there that that's, that's to help give a little bit of a seat uh, right there for the, the, um, the handle to wedge up in there and to keep it from sliding down. So that's pretty self-explanatory. So what we're gonna do is we'll trace this on the top of our handle and then we'll start working, uh, working in the eye. So just like we do an ax, we'll line that up. Make sure you have that straight, those lines straight with your bench. And then we'll lay this on top of here. And it's kind of hard to determine exactly where the center is. And so what I'll do is I'll go to each side, see the daylight, daylight and try to estimate right there and put my fingers in there and kind of index those spots. Then I'll go front to back, daylight, daylight, and just estimate, making sure that my tool head is in line with the handle right there. And take a pencil and uh, draw a line around there. So that looks pretty good. You can see I'm pretty well in the middle. I could favor that side just a little bit. If you, if you get way off, just take a, uh, take a piece of sandpaper and get rid of those lines and just redo it. Redo it there and then you'll, uh, so you don't make a mistake. But I'm, I'm comfortable with that. I think that looks good and I kind of know what I've got. So I'll favor that side here just a little bit.
Last thing I'll do before installing the head is uh, just take a small carving knife or pocket knife, anything you have here, and we're going to work clean up that transition from the oval handle down to where it's going to seat onto the axe head. Because this is a spot that you're, if it's, you've got um, burrs or you've got uh, tear out or anything there, that you won't be able to get to it uh, once the head's installed. And, and now it's, it's, it's much easier. So let's go around and I'm just just smoothing, just imagine a, a nice smooth rolling hill going down to a, um, a flat meadow there. You want that to be as even and consistent as possible. And that's going to give it the, that bottom of that act or the mall head a nice, it's going to come in contact with all the wood and make a nice strong, strong, um, mating surface there that uh, won't come loose on you. you know, just remember, you know, don't get in a hurry with this stuff. You're uh, working with uh, heritage tools, and especially if they're family tools, these are things that you're going to be able to hand down to your children. So uh, you want uh, your ultimate goal is in uh, years to come that when they uh, see it and they think of you, they'll appreciate the effort and craftsmanship that went into it. You can't take anything with you, but you certainly can leave a lot of things behind. Now we're ready to curve the handle. I'm, I'll use my, my biggest saw because I want the thickest, the thickest kerf cut that I can get. And just start slow and you can just, should be able to eyeball that. Watch out for tear out over there. I just almost had some of that. Okay, it's the part we've all been waiting for. Time to seat the handle. I'll start it. Oh, I like that. That is very good. So, oh, that's perfect. Okay. And then, of course, we're going to uh, seat it by striking the handle and pushing it down into the tool head. Sounds counterintuitive, but it's the... Uh, just hit it square. If you don't hit it square, you can knock a chip off your handle. So listen to it. You can hear it. You can feel it when it seats. I felt it seat right in there nice and tight. Oh, this is going to be great. Store-bought handles are generally too big. They're too big for the hand and you just kind of, you don't really realize that until you make one that fits your hand properly. Uh, one thing you, you can, of course, you can use the same techniques and go back and, and redo. Take a little material down on those handles um, to make them more, uh, fit your hand better. But let's take a close up look at this. This is turning out really good. One, one more hit. I can hear it seated. Yep, hear it and feel it. So we can take a look at our work here. You can see, look how nice that handle's fitting. If you can see that or not. Up in there on that shoulder, sitting on that shoulder. It, uh, no gaps. Nice and, oh, that just looks like, looks like it's just growing out of that. That's just beautiful. And here we have on the front side, you can see, not real good at that angle right there, but you can see we got a, Really nice, good fit. I like to bring these handles up, oh, half inch, three quarters of an inch proud. Um, I don't see any harm in leaving that. I think it looks nice and it just gives you a little bit more flair, a little bit more of a mushroom at the end. And if you like, you know, after the wedge, if that's sticking up too tall for you, you can trim that. And it's kind of nice. I, I always trim them after I put the wedge in, then I get a nice clean cut on there. And then you can decide whether you want a step wedge or not. That's entirely up to you. Now it's time to install the wedge. Uh, these are just, this is just a little wedge that I made. It's a little bit small, but it's, it's just fine for this. It doesn't have to go the full width there. One product that um, I've been using uh, that works really good is called uh, Swell Lock. 
It's not glue. Glue doesn't work very well because it, um, it once it breaks its bond, then it, it it's just not um, just not ideal. This the the wood will change as the humidity and changes and and it needs to move with the. It's like maybe I find one a little bit longer than that, or a little bit wider. No, it's fine. I'm good with that. Um, and what swell lock does is uh, you put it into the into the kerf and all over the uh, the wedge. And what it does is it uh, actually will swell the wood. It'll get in and, and cause it to grow. It takes about an hour or two, but put that on there liberally and it will stay in there. And it'll, it, once, it's, once you pound it in, it'll be tight, but the, the swell lock will tighten it even more. So just center that on there. Now it's important, don't, you don't want to hit your wedge with a hammer uh, because you, have a, you can have a real good chance of splitting it. You're better off to get something a little bit wider than the wedge, a piece of hardwood, and then tap it in this way. Now when you cut your kerf, make sure you cut it a little bit longer than the wedge. You don't want to bottom out. There, that's nice. You can get that all the way down there. That is really good. That's nice and tight. that sit in there. Now we can cut it to flush if we want to. This is your call here if you want to use a, a step wedge or not. I, you know, there's a lot of discussion whether it's necessary or not. I have uh, not had good luck not using them because every time I have not used one, uh, the wedge seems to want to back out. So uh, it's your call on that. But when you're working with, a, <clears throat> with a, such a small handle that's as delicate as this one, um, I'd probably recommend it, but you just use a little one. I've got a little one here that's hand, a handmade one, um, and I'll just uh, I'll just kind of center that. I, I like to put them at about a 45, kind of eyeball across there, split that a little bit. I'll pull it out. Just double check. That's where you want it. That looks good. Half the time you're going to split. The handle's going to split. But that's okay. You want it to go in straight. We're getting a little bit of a crack right there. That's pretty common. Um, but it doesn't seem to really, I, I haven't had any issues with it. So, and then I'll just put a little wedge lock on there. It's gonna, you know, wood absorbs moisture through its ends. And so that will, if you look at wood under a microscope, it looks like a bunch of little straws together. And that will just drink that down in there. And this will swell that wood. And that's what we want. It'll swell the wedge and nothing wrong with putting a little bit around the perimeter as well. Then we'll finish off with a little bit of, I've been using this Danish oil. I really like the Danish oil. And rub it in by hand. Don't neglect getting a, as much as you can up in there in the unprotected, or the, up where it goes into the tool. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? Just beautiful. 
You know, the Danish, they know beauty. I love Danish. Oops, that's the wrong stuff there. We don't need to swell lock the back. Now you'll notice I did not do a palm swell on the, hand, on the handle like I would on an ax. It's just not typically done on, on striking tools. Uh, usually a striking tool is going to have a, a straight handle. And I don't, I don't really know why that is. It's just uh, I've always kind of been that way. So I kind of hold to tradition on that. A little up there on top. Danish oil's good for the steel as well. It's not going to hurt anything. Protect it a little bit. Give it a nice luster. So that's it. It turned out really good. I uh, am very happy to have it back. I, I've been missing uh, this length of hammer uh, for just the, all those in-between jobs. When it comes in, when, it, when you're in between a, uh, a four, three, four pounder and a 10 pounder, this with the short handle is just, uh, boy, it's just wonderful. It's really good for pounding wedges. If you're following trees, it's, uh, it, it'll just be your go-to hammer. You'll just use it all the time. And it's not something that I see for sale really anywhere. And it's kind of, uh, it's kind of an older, Old design by guys I think that used hammers a lot. But, um, I, I just love it. It's just uh, very happy to have it uh, back in the collection. But um, turned out great, and hopefully it'll last a long time. And and uh, well, I guess that's about all there is to say. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys on the next video.